as a girl, it's assumed by a lot of people that I want to have children. People don't say, oh, would you like to be a mom? They assume that I am going to become a mom one day. That is assumed that that's my natural role as I get older. Can you older. say the same thing for men? I don't think so in the same way. I think that it's definitely there. Like, there is still that expectation. But like take, for, take, for example, like two stereotypes, right? You have a woman in her 40s who doesn't have children versus a man in his 40s who doesn't have children. When you think of the woman in her 40s, you're like, oh, she's lonely, she's a spinster, she has no purpose, like she doesn't have a family, like she can't possibly have like that inner joy within her life. Think of a man in his 40s, oh, he'll settle down at some point, he's a bachelor, he's just enjoying his life, like all a, of these things. Do you think there's a biological basis for this? I think at some point, just because of due to like the reproductive system, yes. But I do think that a large component is societal. Yeah, well, I think I think that that's all bullshit. So here's a good example of why it's bullshit. It ignores ontology, and you know you know what ontology is. You were taught that in your feminist studies course, right? They don't ever teach ontology. So I'm just being the study honest. of being, meaning that there is a difference between men and women. They're not interchangeable widgets as much as feminists would like to pretend that we are. We each have a separate ontological nature. Our very nature and being is different. This is why these stereotypes exist. They exist because the actual root in which is a man and what is a woman are totally different from one another. Right, but and so when you take these loaded terms like patriarchy, what's ignored by feminists is nature. The, not nature as in the natural world, but rather the nature of what the thing actually is. Men and women are not the same thing. And okay. so because of that, we have a different telos, a different purpose. And this is why when people think about purpose and they say, oh, the 40-year-old spinster, this is not something which is socially pressured as much as it is a way for us to understand the nature of women is to make children. This oh. must be the case because there's no other way they can be made. And so, of course, we would see that women who defy their own nature are going to be more miserable than not. Anything which devolves away from its own purpose tends to not be very happy. Do you think that as a woman, my only purpose is to have children? I think it's your ultimate telos. You think that the most fulfilling, joyful experience I could ever have in my life is to have children? Yes. As opposed to anything so many else. Wait, can I, so let me so ask here, you. Let me give you the straight answer. No. Yes. And why? Okay. Why would I think that? Well, because all of the evidence which I have and you have would indicate that that is true. A, can men have children? No. Nope. Who can? Women. And the primary edict from an evolutionary standpoint is reproduction, yeah. is it not? Well, yeah, of course. Nobody's denying that. So then if the primary edict is reproduction and only women can have children, then it seems that the nature and purpose for women ultimately is to be the ones who have children. Otherwise, we go extinct, right? That, that, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. Right. So yes, of course, I would tie generally the purpose of the thing to the thing. Yeah. So, okay. Are you, you're finished, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that is all absolutely true. There's nothing, I can disagree about that, but why, why the need for like zero effort in wanting progress, like wanting more than that? Is... Why, why, what can be more, what, I don't understand how you can deliver more progress to society than, for I instance, mean... rocks and non-biological things cannot replicate. You can actually replicate your genetics. You can do that. Yeah, that's a solely, miracle. Solely <laughs> biological I, beings only can do this. Yeah, that's a and miracle, yet, and that's what great. What could ever be a higher purpose than that for a woman? I would actually like to know. I don't what know. would be I a higher purpose for a woman than replication? I personally, if I were to have a child right now, I would not be like, this is the end of it. I'm the happiest I've ever been, and this is the happiest I'm ever going to be. Are Things you a have mom? Fulfill me. No, uh, I'm are, not. Then how the fuck would you know? Because there's plenty of other things like, that What are you I talking have, about? I'm talking about the things that have given me purpose, that have fulfilled me, and kept me alive and happy, and not still wanting to have to be a mom okay. prematurely, because that's sure. my purpose. So let me ask you very directly. What could you ever do in your life that would be more important than replicating your genes? 
therapy. Oh my God, Honestly, if, you, if we're going to go into that territory, helping yeah, other what? children that don't have parents, These I don't have to have replicate my own genes to do that. If there's five children that don't have parents, they have nothing, mm -hmm. and then I'm over here wanting to replicate myself in that mm -hmm. selfish state of mind, why would that I be have selfish? the choice of doing it. it is, it's a bit selfish because you can help this child that is going to die Hold without on. your I, Why can't you help the child and replicate? Because your resources are going to have to I'm be. I'm going to get things back on track a little Wait, bit. Wait, what? So. I don't, I don't even understand it's the off, argument. It's off the rails. So, so yeah, you don't you replicate can. because there's children out there who are in need? Yeah, you don't have to replicate in order to have that feeling of motherhood. Somebody mother has to replicate. Wait. Somebody has to replicate There's for those children to exist. There's plenty of people replicating all over the world right now. Yeah. So, so that's somebody not, that's has to replicate, point. right? Yes, yes. But that, so if that's the case, then still you would purpose. still be fulfilling your ultimate purpose, yeah, which talking, would be yeah, to yeah. take care of what is replicated. Yes. There's a lot of other things that I'm excited to, to that I think rest. are my purpose besides childbirth. And personally, speaking from the perspective as a woman, you are not a biological woman. There is a list of things that I am more excited to do than give birth to children at the moment. Well, wait a second. Are you saying that there's a distinction between people who self-identify as women and biological women? No, I'm saying that you're Split. not a biological woman. Well, then I can have the same exact lived experience you do. Do you identify as a woman? It, does, it wouldn't matter, would it? All that matters is that I could have the same exact lived experience as you if you make no distinction between the self-ID and the biological. And if you don't, and you said you don't, then you can't say you're not a biological woman, so therefore X. Can I please finish? Yeah, but you, you can finish after you clarify how it is that you can tell me what my lived experience is when you make no distinction between the biological and whatever my self-ID may be. You know what? I am sorry for assuming your self-ID. That was wrong on my part. I'll so I can have the same exact that. lived experience as a biological woman, right? Do you think you have the lived experience? I could have the same exact experience as a biological woman under your worldview, correct? You're arguing that... Are you going to answer this, my question? I am, ar I am answering your question, and I need you to stop interrupting me. Okay, so yes or no, could I have the same experience as a biological woman without being a biological woman under your worldview? Yes or no? If you would let me finish, you would know that I have... Can I please speak? I would like to speak my answer without being interrupted. Go ahead. Here is my perspective. You are arguing, right, that as a biological woman, due to my hormones, my purpose, the greatest, most fulfilling thing in my life is ex having children, right? Watch you, you're not answering my question. I'm... You just asked me a question. You didn't answer my question. So I'm gonna ask you again. Under your worldview, can I have, a, by self-identifying as a woman, the same exact experience that you have as a biological woman or not? I think it's more complex than that. Is it okay for you me gotta to speak into the mic or I can't hear you? I think it's personally more complex than that, and I quite honestly don't have a yes or no answer, and I think it's more subjective right. on a case to case basis. No, so you don't even if know if there's a distinction between someone you, who's a biological okay. woman and someone who just self IDs. How can you use the fact that you're a biological woman as an argument then? I have tried to explain. I do not think that this is a yes or no question. I think that it is simply on a case-to-case -case basis. It's not black and white. I think it's a little sure. more complex than that. The concept is you. too complex oh, that you can't say yes or no to a direct question. Now, I'd like to demonstrate for you the distinction between the two of us. You can go ahead and ask me the same exact question, and I will say yes or I will say no and then give my qualifier. Because either one's true or it's not true. Can I please continue? I have something what do you mean? else to say. I have some questions too. If I'll I could go, throw yeah. a couple questions out there. Are you gonna? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I thought Andrew had more. You got more, Andrew? What you got? I would like to actually go through this because I don't understand how you make the argument. Uh, you're not a biological woman, therefore blank, mm -hmm. because by your worldview. 
if I just self ID'd as being the thing and then claimed I had the same experience that a biological woman has, even if I claim that it's the overly masculine experience that I'm used to, you could have no argument against that unless you are making the distinction between a biological woman and a self ID'd woman. Are you making the distinction between the two? Andrew, what I was going to say is that I do not think this concept is too complex for you to understand. This topic in itself is so complex that I personally do not have a yes or no answer. I just don't have an answer. <coughs> I solely don't. Assume, assume for a second. Let me just make sure I got this right. And then, sure, I'll turn it over to Brian for whatever he wants. I just want to make sure I got this right. You are unsure whether or not, based on just self-ID, I could or could not have the same experiences as a biological woman. I just want to make sure that we got that on record. It's not that I'm unsure. I think it's more dependent on a case-to-case -case basis. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not saying that the topic is too complex for you to understand. I think you fully understand it. That's not what I'm getting at here. I'm not trying to invalidate your opinion. I'm not. Well, we can't stay bogged down on this thing, so. I have a couple questions I'd like to ask. So when Andrew was talking about you know, this being perhaps the ultimate thing that a woman could do in her life, and you said, well, there are plenty of things that I would... Ra I can clarify for you. I remember what I said. I said, there are plenty of things that I'm more looking forward to than childbirth and reproducing and multiplying my own genes right now. I can personally think yeah, of many Yeah, what are some things. of those? Yeah. Okay, I want to live abroad right now. So at mm -hmm. my current place in life right now, I am more looking forward to living abroad, going to grad school, graduating from grad school, meeting a future partner, doing all of these things. If someone were unable to have biological children, right, would you still argue that her greatest purpose in life is to reproduce? Well, I wasn't really making the argument, but she's incapable of reproducing. If she can't reproduce, she can't reproduce. So she could go off and find something else. But I guess my question to you is, one, you could do all of those things and also have children. But I guess what I often hear is there are better things than having children. It's typically in pursuit of a career. I think that is a common argument. I think yeah. that... It honestly is subjective. I myself personally have never had the desire to have children, if I'm being fully honest. Sure, that's fine. Yeah, but I and guess. I, but do you I'm think not saying that some women's purpose isn't to be moms? I think that's totally fine. I know some people who enjoy motherhood. It's the thing that they're meant to do, and I'm not trying to invalidate that. I think that women should just so simply have the choice if that is what they want to do or not. Right. I don't think we're making the argument that they shouldn't have the mm. choice. I think the argument we're trying to make is probably the most selfless and most altruistic and most impactful thing they could do upon the world is reproduce, have children, be a mother. Here's another counter thing. Say I didn't have children biologically. I mm. adopted. Yeah. And I saved kids from an instance where they're refugees, they don't have the proper resources, they don't have social right. provisions given to them, and I give them a life in a developed nation, and I provide them all the loving care that a mm. biological mother possibly could, would you argue that that's still just as altruistic and selfless? It would be yeah, noble sure. you. It sure, but somebody else had to do the replicating. So the thing is, somebody still had to replicate and fulfill their highest purpose in order for you to then fulfill your highest yes, purpose. Yes, I'm not denying mm. that a woman has to bear children. So Could do you I? think working for some nameless corporation and being a worker drone is generally more fulfilling than having children? I think that for some women, if they find a career that they are extremely passionate about, yes, it could. Do you think most women have careers not. they're passionate about? I think that I wish they did. I think it's really hard to find something that you're that passionate about and be able to turn it into a living. I would argue that that's not my purpose in life. I don't think that is a lot of people's purpose in life. But like how you said earlier, like... What do you want to do for work? What do like, I want to do for work? I yeah, want to be... A lawyer. What kind of law? I want to go into employment law, and I want to deal with, like, workers' comp cases. And do you think that, you know, when you're on your deathbed and you're looking back, do you think that you'll think, you know, if, in comparison, if you had children, do you think you'd be more fond memories of having children around you 
or when you're in your old age, if you have children, grandchildren, do you think that would be kind of more uh, desirable than like looking back on the fond memories of that employment lawsuit that you just scorched? You killed it. Well, if it was for a better obviously call. not, but I think it's a little, I think it's a very broad assumption to assume that I won't be surrounded with children in a different sense. Like my little brother wants to have children. I'm looking forward to being on. I work as a nanny. I work with a three-year-old and an eight-year-old right now. I want to volunteer as a teacher abroad for a few years. It's not that I don't love children. I think that they're amazing. I love being able to see things through the perspective of someone who's seeing it with fresh eyes. I think it's such an amazing thing. I'm not denying that. Mm. And I would love to like be an aunt. I would love to volunteer with children in the future. I personally just don't think being a mother is for me. Yeah. Personally. All right. Okay, so, so, so hold on, hold on. Okay. So, okay. I think one of the criticisms of feminism is its actual attack on women who do choose to have families and who mm -hmm. want to, for example, go have kids, be a mom, be a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. They think that that's some sort of form of oppression. Oh, I don't think uh. it is. I think it's solely and i've said this but, so many times i think it's a case-to-case -case basis well sure anyways i do just one last question if you don't okay. mind just, and then Mason uh, on, the, had on the topic of altruism would you agree with me that highly educated and intelligent women tend to actually procreate less than people who are in poor socioeconomic conditions and have less intelligence that's a rough line no it's not rough i mean I poor people reproduce more than rich people do generally speaking that is just the I mean, case that could be related to resources and yeah i'm not disputing any of that it could be related to all sorts of things but it is a like fact education that levels and like opportunity to find yeah. other things that you find generally the more educated a person is the less they procreate but I, this I is agree. The, the, I the reason agree. i asked this question I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. It's okay. I understand. Uh, I agree. Uh, there. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Sorry. I think there is a correlation between education and higher levels of employment. That being said, it's also because these people with higher education have better insurance, better access to health care, more access to birth control. I think that also is a factor in it. And they have less children. Yes, I do think they have less children. I've so in, here's the thing. Well, if you're truly altruistic, wouldn't you want the children of the future to be the smartest? And if you wanted them to be the smartest, shouldn't you be reproducing more than the dumbest people are? I think it's more resources than genetics. Not well versed in this subject, so take whatever I'm saying with a grain of salt. I'm not acting like I know everything on this subject. I think that if a child was to have the proper education, proper environment to develop, a good childhood versus impeccable genetics, I think that that would pay a bigger role. If it were even so that it's resources based, it must be because nourishment, for instance, correlates with IQ. If you're young and you're malnourished, your brain it becomes deformed, literally. Yes, uh, it doesn't grow education. to its potential. If you have the best and brightest women who are out there in the workforce instead of procreating, regardless of if it's due to resources or genetics, the future generations are going to be dumber than the previous generations, right? Hang on, let her answer. Okay. I would argue that there's different ways in order to impact a child's upbringing than just being their mother. And I don't think that... That's an answer to my question. It really isn't. That's a total evasion of my question. If the people who have the resources and are the best and the brightest and the smartest women, if we're wasting them in the workforce instead of them reproducing, how are we not going to end up with dumber generations of children? I do see your point a little bit here. I think you do have a valid argument. My thing is that on average, more educated women with higher salaries do tend to have less children on average, right? That doesn't so mean the future of our, our so children, future though. generations are going to be smarter or less smart. I think it more so depends on the resources that you have and accessible the, to you. It depends on the so, school district that you're living yeah. in. I think it depends on. The, I guess what Andy's parenting. trying to get to is yeah. like if those women who are smart, educated, mm -hmm. have the most resources, therefore they should be having the most children because they have the most resources, education to train them up and create bright, mm -hmm. a bright future for us all. Yeah. Um, Why would I want to waste okay. the best and the brightest of the only people who can replicate their genetics going and working for a boss in some fucking cubicle when they could be reproducing the next generation and actually of, making of women who can then reproduce place. the best and the brightest and the best, et cetera, et cetera. Like, that seems absurd to me. But don't you see a lot of cases where, like, there are 
families that are in that position and can but don't right but those people that do their children are worse than the children that that like that doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. have to do with I, I swear you, to god it has nothing to do what the fuck are you saying because that has nothing to do with that because those those can okay. have children and they'll I want to bring it back to patriarchy let them me bring how you it, want it yeah. to be okay, because yep. they're bad parents you, they could be awful need parents. to watch okay. the movie yeah. Yeah. Idiocracy. Smart. you'll understand everything well, all right it's so, not okay. that hard to understand <laughs> it's let's hard to understand it, let, if let's, you've never been in let's a bring situation it back. or a different country <laughs> let's bring it back to patriarchy we kind of derailed there a little bit but it was good do we currently live in the patriarchy i would say patriarchy is not a physical place so in that sense no but yes we do live under a patriarchal society yes okay and under patriarchy are women oppressed i would say yes okay under patriarchy are men oppressors not always i think that sometimes yes but also like i was explaining earlier women can also be oppressors okay so but you did say that women are oppressed under patriarchy yeah but i also think that sometimes too men can be oppressed by toxic like ideals of toxic masculinity as well okay so are you oppressed i would say relative to other populations no i'm a white cis woman i have experienced different forms of sexism patriarchal norms that have affected me and had like like that have classified as a form of oppression it's hard for me to say i think that as a woman i experience forms of oppression that the average man wouldn't such as such as can i use in just a um two letters sure sa dv those occur to women at much much higher rates they can Mm. still occur to men but those are issues that how, it's not clear to me, rates. wouldn't that be something that occurs on the individual level? How would it be evidence of oppression? Because okay. typically you're thinking of like a system would be oppressing you yeah. or a government would be oppressing you or the patriarchy would be oppressing you. Mm-hmm. But it's not clear to me. So you said DV and you said SA. Mm-hmm. I don't see how that's necessarily evidence of oppression. Are you saying that there's a culture, there's a SA culture? Yes, there is. I would argue that patriarchy and this system of ideas i would argue personally that the way that it sustains things like dv and sa is because it teaches men that they are the ones in power right and when they don't feel in power sometimes there are instances where they need to feel in control and need to feel in power and those things will happen all men what, what percentage Not of all men? men what percentage of men though I don't know the exact percentage off the top mm. of my head, but well, you're kind of dumb. I mean, isn't this just sexist on its face because you're essentially just pathologizing all men? No, I'm not. Not all, all men. men you, you're saying in these men are inclined things. to violence and SA. I'm That's saying pathologizing men. I'm saying that the notions of patriarchy lead to men committing SA and DV at higher rates than women. Can I ask you, okay, so you say we have a culture, we have an, I mean, I, I can't use the word, but we have an SA culture, mm-hmm. our word culture. Yes. I've heard this term, right? Mm-hmm. But like, if you look at prison populations, for example, you can be in there for murder, for example, and be just fine. If you're in there among the other inmates and you've been accused of some sort of sex crime, you're going to be targeted by criminals for reprisal, for attack, for violence, etc. So even among criminals, men who commit sex crimes are, they have to be put in protective custody. So even, how, how can you say that we live in a culture where this is deemed as okay, when actually it's, I think a lot of men would actually prefer to be accused of murder than to be accused of SA. What I would argue with that is that we don't live in a culture where it's okay. We live in a culture where it's often swept under the rug and it's allowed in very nuanced ways. (laughs) I would argue that, yes, I I agree with your point that like most men would rather be convicted of murder than that. Yes, but that also you have to realize is that's been a more recent shift within our culture. Kind of as recent as feminism has been injected. I was going to say more so recently with the Me Too movement recently shown or talked about recently we've seen s and dv cases been taken much more seriously in recent years so i would argue that treating prison like the the prison example that you presented might be a result of that i'm not exactly sure to be honest 
I think it's okay for me to admit that I I don't have yeah. this all figured well, out. Well, let's here. so let's bring it to DV. So you mm -hmm. mentioned that women suffer higher rates of DV. Yes. But Andrew, and perhaps you have the stats on this. I've heard you make this argument. I'm familiar with this, these statistics. Is that I believe when it comes to where the domestic violence is one directional, I believe this is the case, when it's one directional, they actually found that women victimized men more than men victimized women. Yeah. When you're using the term victimization, what does that refer to specifically? They were it refers like to unwarranted abused. assaults, unwarranted touching, and unwarranted non consenting engagements. Talking about like like violence against men perpetrated by women. Yes, what I'm saying Not just is... violence, but also yeah, SA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so that you understand, I can explain the mm -hmm. position real quick. So the rates of SA against men are generally much higher than it is against women. It just depends on how we are going to utilize these metrics. Mm -hmm. Women seem to engage in unwanted touching of men far more often than men do of women. It's just that men seem to not care as much. However, women seem to care a lot more. However, it's still unwanted. Right? It's just that nobody cares that men didn't want the unwanted touching. They just don't care. If you have ever seen in public, for instance, a man walk over to a woman and maybe just put his hand on her back and rub her back a little bit, that's unwanted touching. It's taken seriously. Okay. People really will hone in on it. Uh -huh. However, if the role's reversed and a woman does that to a man, nobody gives a shit. I personally don't believe that, but I think the cause of that problem being this big is because of lack of communication. I'll give you an example. It's, it's not being if communicated. You, if you first go out on the street tomorrow, and I'll I bet you up, what you're well, saying. I can't bet because it's YouTube, but I would give you, if I was wrong about this, right. $500. Okay. If you were to take Brian and take you out to the street tomorrow, sure. and Brian walked over to 50 different women, uh -huh. walked over to them randomly, yeah, and yeah. just patted them on the back and started rubbing it, which do you think would have a more negative response? I mean, it's obvious, but... Why? Why? Wait, it's <laughs> obvious. It's obvious. Of course it's going to be, chat. yes, the one. You're right. I agree with what you're saying. I think the, well, I'm trying to Aren't tell you. Aren't both of those? I'm sorry. Yes, yes, it is. Then, no, why? So but, how come nobody gives a shit about men? How do they many not women it? essaying they men? Don't why don't they give a shit about it? Because it's not communicated that that is a problem to men. They're, they hide that fact and make it seem like I don't even know why people do that. So is it a like problem it needs to be if, communicated. So is it not a problem if women don't communicate it? So is the communication the issue it, or is the essay to, the issue? To me a lot of it does have to do with the communication of that. Like you need to be clear about your boundaries and nobody's going to know. We're talking about total strangers here. So hold on Nick, pull up the infographic. Okay. You're going to have to move the chat. So you have here there's reciprocal interpartner violence and non-reciprocal interpartner violence. So reciprocal, mm -hmm. they're both fucking beating on each other. Mm -hmm. Non-reciprocal, that's where one's beating on the other, mm -hmm. the other is not reciprocating. So they actually found in non-reciprocal interpartner violence that women are much more likely to be the sole aggressor when it comes to domestic violence. So but let me quickly point out, just to kind of wrap this up, that what you just got done saying would be a thing that you would rage against which is, well, wait a second, you kept it to yourself and you didn't speak up, you must have wanted it. I'm, How would that sound the, the other thing. direction if, if, so, if a man said to you, oh, you didn't speak tell. up, you yeah. didn't say anything, you must have wanted it. Yeah, they do, that actually does happen. That's the yeah, whole and, point, and that's the whole you would be reason. against it, right? Yeah, but the, the difference is also like when we do try to communicate it it's not taken seriously nor is it it's those things get really? in the way i thought the argument we were just having but is that now men, it's they taken make it, far more but, seriously yeah i'm pretty sure we voice it a little at least a little bit more than men that we don't like certain things <laughs> so quicker it's fault than that if women sa them and they don't speak up it's them but if the roles are reversed no, and women don't speak up they're a victim no right? no no it's an equal it's an equal okay thing. i got i'm sorry i'm gonna bring <laughs> like, it back to her so okay so we were talking about oppression aside from the two examples that you provided which it's not clear to me immediately that that's evidence of oppression is there anything else of oppression In, for me well you said how you've been oppressed yeah how i've been oppressed because well, you said women are oppressed and asked how you're oppressed i would argue that personally 
those are because they are systemic. I know. How are they systemic? I've explained this a couple times, but it's just the idea that these are. So is the government sending out like. Things can be systemic Mm. without being related to the government. There are systemic processes that occur. There are processes that replicate themselves over and over again that have nothing to do with the government. But I just showed you data that indicates that when it comes to non-reciprocal. That data was from It was from the CDC, and domestic violence rates have actually decreased since then. I would like to see another source, if I'm being honest, before we go solely based off of one. I feel like (laughs) all violent crimes have decreased. Not okay. just domestic. But are you saying that there's a systemic thing against men when it comes to non-reciprocal interpartner violence? Could you repeat the question? Using the infographic that I showed, mm-hmm. which was a CDC study, it showed that when it came to non-reciprocal interpartner violence, men were the victims in 70% of cases, which would indicate that in that context, <laughs> women are much more likely to be the aggressor. I think that when you're looking at data like that, you have to realize that women have been told not to come forward with these things. You can make that same argument. That data is relying off of solely reported cases. Do you really think men are more likely to come forward with essay cases? (laughs) No. I'm saying that women... Much less likely. So this problem... It's probably... That's a problem. The the statistics are probably worse than what is reported. I'm just talking about women solely right now. I'm not arguing that. Right, but if we're doing a comparison here, you could actually just make the argument that the man will look like a bitch if he goes to the police and is like, my girl hit me, my girl slapped me. That's a bad way to put it. But it's honest, it's reality. I don't understand. understand. SA is also self-reported from women. Yeah. Okay, if we're talking about the DV part of the conversation, like I I can say that I know a lot of women personally, unfortunately, that have been more violent towards men and I never condoned it like that's not okay obviously but on the other side of the argument where you were asking her like in what areas does that like come out where we're oppressed in in that sense like it's one example I personally can go to straight up is like career wise in any career if you want to let's say even in music right Taylor you, Swift if, if you as a man you're want all to get in the, the place, industry but okay. Okay, whatever. I'll engage. Okay, you go can ahead. make sense of it whenever you want. Okay, but I mean, you're talking about music, but okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's in the music industry. Like, if women, I were to enter are, that. Women are not just succeeding listen, just listen. in the music industry. Just listen, my love. It will take a longer time for me to, to get to a successful part in my career because I have to deal with people like that I have to work with producers and things like that that will only present an opportunity to me if there were something extra involved okay, and if that couch. was not you're talking about the casting couch very wouldn't that be relevant. helpful wouldn't I mean I'm not saying it's right but wouldn't that actually get you in rooms yeah. hold on let me finish get me in rooms wouldn't where I have to do something that, I don't want to do no but I'm saying no you don't even have to do anything doesn't? you can just be a young beautiful attractive and you it can maneuver work out. for me to be able to get in a room with yeah. somebody who's really high status uh-huh. I have to be a somebody yeah as a woman you can be in a room with a fucking dr- major I've musician been in those situations. Who, who's the most famous you've been in a room with Rick Rubin, but he hasn't personally I'm, tried to right. do anything to but, me. But, but I'm talking about the people. you had that opportunity just because what? If he said if I did something for him, uh, then what, what is your point? That's not what I'm saying. What did exactly. you have to do you're, you're to saying, get in that you're room with because him? I'm I didn't a have woman, to do anything to get in that room. Saying, but if I were to want to get my career taken seriously and not just the oh la di da, this is a play date. No oh, do shit. the guys. No except, shit. Except but you, we can't just walk into a room with somebody. Yeah, we, but, we have to work extremely hard. And then when hard. you do, you don't have to also... You, we have to do the hard work and potentially go through no, 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 no. all of those... You can deny so it or not. We, I'm, we I'm telling do, you We have experience. to do the hard work... And then we can get an audience, and then we have to reprove ourselves. Cool. No, can't I can't. So. I can't just go and to. I'm, I'm I can't just go to Miami, oh, find the most uh, most successful guy there, jump on his yacht just because I'm an attractive dude. Any any really attractive woman can that walk down like to a port, <laughs> show herself off to really right. successful men, and just jump on get their on yacht. The boat. Yeah, that's how you don't get taken seriously, though. You have to have all these little loopholes to get there and then you still might not be. Hold on, first off, the entertainment business is incredibly cutthroat. Oh, women oppressed. 
Taylor Swift is like the highest earning artist. So that is the best artist. example you can give. <laughs> the idea that women can't pretty make much it. any any Whereas female artist. You're in front of somebody they capitalize that can on give their beauty. Real life experiences like more than dozens. I just want to ask. I think the instance that you provided of like a woman can go and capitalize on her beauty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can totally yeah. happen, right? It's what fair. I mean, it's, can it's only it's take you so far. But I have a, I have like a sub question okay, to pose okay. with that, and I want yeah, to hear yeah. like your honest opinion. What percentage of women do you think? are beautiful enough to get that privilege is it the majority of women or is Bro, it the minority? i'm just genuinely not, curious yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no wrong answer. seriously yeah no I, I think i don't know if i would give a percentage of it it'd probably be like you know, like 40 percent of women could probably do it could reach that like level of like like use their beauty yeah, to <laughs> stick their foot in the door to be able to get opportunities sounds, yeah i definitely that think so sounds okay. like a movie version of like, no what i mean you that's, think it is because no, that's not what, what how do you think OnlyFans is blown up? That's like a whole other women, fucking women thing. Women who are you can be like forty percent of the highest, uh, I yeah. guess, attractiveness of women that just has can to jump on a like. random website oh, and man. make hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're taken seriously and like, oh, you're talented, and then not go through a group of people that pretend like they're gonna like facilitate no, okay, your career no. or whatever and it, not try to abuse no, their power no beauty gets you a whole lot uh, in pretty much I, any I any agree, industry but not to that extent all right if we were to assume for a second that it was only five percent only five percent that you could agree at least that five percent of women could possibly go that route with beauty right maybe not as high as 40 percent maybe five i don't know, maybe, possibly, but still not, without, that, I mean, zero, not without zero encounters of the type that I'm talking about. I gotta about. move it on. I do have to move it on. Do you want to make your final point, Andrew? Or this, yeah, this well, derailed. I mean, I was just going to grant it and say, well, maybe, even if it was sure. an abysmally low number who could leverage beauty for gain, let's say 5%, 3%, even 2%, it wouldn't matter. That wouldn't mean that women who rated themselves as a 10 and had a high <laughs> esteem of their beauty yeah. might not still follow that route thinking that they would be part of a percentile that they actually weren't. Okay, great. But that still doesn't at all make me believe that you at least try to understand that this is a very real and possible thing and version of oppression that we're talking about. Women are oppressed in the music industry? I'm sure if that's what you want to fucking chalk it down to, Arguing? not all it is. That's something that I can really speak on without having to research it and look at statistics. This is something I've experienced myself. Not every woman in the music industry, in a lot no, of fields speaking. of work. Wait, so you're a musician, just, right? You're a musician? I also, yes, do music. Okay, and so you think you haven't been able to make it in the music industry because you're a woman? No, no. So what's not your that I've had to go through being potentially in really unpleasant situations in order to get yeah there's producers that want to hit yeah all like, and they're gonna yeah I what get about it. photographers as a model it's not yeah, just like hollywood. oh i'm i'm good looking and i just yes get hollywood things, has like a, terrible, a piece of fucking cake you know hollywood has a terrible yeah, reputation but it's not, for the casting couch. that's the only representative i can give because that's what i know okay cool 